Motas Tabanakis. See, welcome into the worst fantasy show. I am your host with the least, Jack Lucene. And on today's show, we're taking it easy because I've already done like three fucking shows today. So we are just going to be doing a nice little draft on drafters. Shout out to my guy, Big uh, Draft Energy, aka Disco. Uh, who turned me on to drafters. Uh, I found out basically that they are available in Ontario, which is where I'm originally from and will eventually be moving back to. So this is really good information just for me to know in general. And look at that. We got the 101, you guys. So let's start this off. You know what? Let's go traditional. It's a three wide receiver build. Let's go with CeeDee Lamb. Let's keep it tradish in this bish. Sorry for these terrible jokes. It's been a really long fucking day for me, like I mentioned. This is like my fourth or fifth coffee now. And uh, if you guys are not on Drafters, not familiar, uh, go sign up to Drafters and actually use the code DISCO. uh, Because that's my guy, Big Draft Energy. His name is DISCO. He will be uh, doing a worst interview with me, uh, hopefully tomorrow, assuming all things uh, are kosher, and that will drop, oof, that's going to drop uh, like a month from now, basically. Um, at the same time, lots going on. The live shows are coming back starting next week. I will be going live live every single day uh no <laughs> that's not me i'm not the everyday guy i'm gonna be going live once a week <laughs> once a week we're gonna go live uh it's gonna be on sunday evenings uh so i'm gonna do sunday evenings at seven eastern standard time until the season kicks off and then once we're back into the uh nfl regular season starting week one i'm gonna go back to the full live show so that's three times a week coming at you Tuesday and Thursday nights, and again on Sunday morning. Uh, so let's take a look at this uh, board. Uh, immediately after C.D. Lamb was Christian McCaffrey at 102, and then we get a run of wide receivers, uh, Justin Jefferson, Tyree Kill. We, it a little interrupt us with Brees Hall, but then right back to wide receivers, Jamar Chase, Amon Ross, St. Brown, Puka Nakua, to me, going ahead of A.J. Brown, I think is facetious. Me, personally, I would take A.J. Brown, but, I mean, it, you would just be flipping their draft positions, ultimately. Uh, Bijan Robinson, I really like that pick. If I am going to go running back in the first round, I think he has a chance to finish as the 101 this year uh, because of – you know, obviously the improvement to the quarterback room, but also the improvement to the coaching staff, in my opinion, for his game, bringing in basically that whole Rams coaching staff, I think is an absolute win. Um, AJ Brown, Jonathan Taylor, Garrett Wilson, Jameer Gibbs. I like that. I'm not a huge fan of Garrett Wilson. I like Jameer Gibbs. And, oh, we're already back on the clock here. We're going to go do Double up on the wide receiver. Double up. Uh, uh. Yeah, let's take Brent Ayukin. Little Cooper Cup. No, we're going to take DJ Moore. I still like DJ Moore. As our third wide receiver, potentially the spike weeks with DJ Moore, if Caleb Williams hits, I, I like that. So we're starting with, like I said, very tradish build today. Uh, going triple wide receiver here. Uh, but Debo Samuel went right before the Brandon Ayuk pick, which is interesting. And right before that was Saquon Barkley, who's been personally one of my favorite second round picks uh, in a lot of the drafts that I've done, uh, especially where I've been going a little bit further, like anywhere at 106. For example, like between Jalen Waddle, Chris Olave, Mike Evans, I've had a really hard time not just taking Saquon Barkley there. It's either that or I'm trying to jump down to one of those 49ers wide receivers. I'm not as enamored with Jalen Waddle or 
you know, I mean, Chris Olave is kind of almost the only game in town. And then with Mike Evans, it's like death taxes and a thousand yard receiving season from Mike Evans. So I get it. But uh, I don't know. It's not my favorite. And we're strapped in here for the long haul, you guys, because this has two extra rounds. This goes 20 rounds deep. Um, so after we took DJ Moore, Devonta Smith, Koopa Cup, Malik Neighbors, DK Metcalf. Metcalf could have been in consideration for us also. I really like him this year. Uh, especially they got the... They got the guy who is like great with all the passing games coming from the Bucks. There, I forget his name right now. I gotta do my coaching episode soon so that I cement all these new coaching changes in my head. Uh, Stephon Diggs, Michael Pittman, Pity City, Travis Kelsey. It's actually higher than I've been seeing Travis Kelsey go for the most part. I feel like he's been going actually closer to the three eleven. Where if I'm at the 311 and Travis Kelsey makes it to me that far, I'm double tapping Kelsey Mahomes there. Uh, but then we get a uh Christian Kirk, who I feel like people are forgetting about, uh, Jalen Hurts, Kyron Williams, and Zay Flowers. I'm just looking at some of these other teams here. This is why me personally, I generally am not a huge fan of like these traditional, you know, just take every wide receiver builds because, you know, I look at there's one, two, three other teams that did that, meaning that's nine receivers off the board just with those teams. And, you know, and like, yes, I got CD Lamb number one, but, and I like the value of Brandon you can DJ more there, but, you know, I, it, I find it difficult in the middle rounds. It's, I feel like it's not as bad where I'm at right now at the 101. Cause in a vacuum, like would I rather have DJ Moore or DK Metcalf at the pick that I was at over Devon A. or Kyron Williams? Yes. But you know, when I'm in more of like the middle of the rounds, Derek Henry is someone I'm really enamored with Travis Kelsey, even though he's getting older, I still really like that pick. Earlier, we were talking about Saquon in the second round. It's really hard for me to pass on Saquon in favor of some of the wide receivers that I am not as enthused about. So, a uh, touch of green here. The staying strong with the wide receiver. Touch of green and Woozy Ateme. Is that the name? They're the ones uh, going super wide receiver with me right now. Hmm. And we are also going to just keep going super wide receiver. I actually really like Chris Godwin in this range. And we are going to take, I don't want to take the tight end yet. We're going to take our first running back. I am super enamored with James Cook. I think James Cook is going to finish as a top five running back this year. You look at what he was able to do last year, producing basically 1,500 yards on the season, and he did. He only had like six touchdowns. I don't think that Ray Davis and Frank Gore Jr. are just coming in and take all the work from him. I think they're really coming in to be kind of like, yes, goal line presence in a sense, but also like backups, like true backups. Um, so I, I really like James Cook. Me personally, I'm just looking again at the stats for last year. I'm just pulling it up. I mean, in a PPR league, he finished at uh, 12 overall, according to Sleeper, with 1,122 rushing yards on an uh, on a yards per carry of 4.73. So he was averaging almost five yards a carry, and he only had two touchdowns. But then you look at the receiving, he had another 44 receptions, 445 yards, and four touchdowns. So with the opening up in the wide receiver room, and I know Josh Allen typically, historically, has not been the check down guy. But I, I have this kind of sneaky feeling this year 
that Josh Allen is going to take a little bit of a step back. And we we kind of saw sort of the beginning of it last year in that, you know, he had 111 rushing attempts, which is still pretty high. Um, but it was a little bit down from the previous years of 126 and 122. The rushing yardage was down because I think he was – I, even though there were definitely plays where he was like, you know, trying to run through guys, there were times where he was getting out of bounds or sliding more than again in previous years. And the big outlier here for me that scares the bejesus out of me is 15 touchdowns. If Josh Allen were to have the exact same rushing numbers, let's say he has a hundred carries for 500 yards again this this upcoming season but let's pretend that he has seven touchdowns which is what he had the year before uh and what but what carried him that year before was he had 4300 passing yards and 35 passing touchdowns and it's i don't know that he's going to be able to take the hit at both you you look at the exodus of Stephon Diggs and now the offense primarily is supposed to go through, I guess, Dalton Kincaid and Curtis Samuel and possibly Khalil Shakir and Keon Coleman. To me, none of those are like field stretches. This was a lot of, you know, in front of you type of targets. And if the touchdowns, especially those rushing touchdowns, 15 rushing touchdowns, if those regress, I don't see Josh Allen finishing as the number one quarterback so far ahead of the rest of the pack that it justifies his ADP as still being drafted as usually the one Oh, like the first quarterback off the board. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's a long winded way of saying I like James cook because you know, they're just, they're going to design that. I think James cook, gets more touchdowns. I think the running game in general gets more touchdowns. I think Josh Allen gets a little bit less. Not that he's falling off a cliff. It's not me saying Josh Allen is going to fall out of the top five or top 10. Just saying, I can see the world where Josh Allen is not the number one quarterback of the bullet. Okay, who are we taking here? I am so confused right now. Let's take, oh, you know what? I love Brian Thomas. Especially the big playability. Um, do we want to, to take another running back to the suite before the run happens? No, I'm going to take Kyler Murray. I'm going to take my quarterback here. I really love Kyler Murray's upside this year. You talk about Marvin Harrison Jr. and Trey McBride and a quarterback with rushing ability who can break fantasy in that way. I am enamored with Kyler Murray, especially when you look at the ADP of I just got him in the seventh round. That's two rounds later than Anthony Richardson, for example. So I really like the value of Kyler Murray. I like stacking him with Trey McBride also, if that's something that I – if I had taken McBride earlier – so you look at that's McBride was sniped from me. Oh, now I, I just realized I probably sniped uh, Kyler from Graham Cracker unintentionally. That's a good feeling though. I, I kind of like doing that. Uh, I just really like Kyler Murray's value overall. But now that I see that he was the one that got McBride right before he, uh, because if McBride had been there for me in the fourth round, I probably would have taken him over Godwin, which would have made a nice stack. But right now I've got already five wide receivers that I feel really good about, which again, on this format, because an underdog, it's a little bit different. Underdog fantasy normally is one, two, I think it's one, two, two, one. I want to say like one quarterback, um, yeah, I think it's one, two, two, one, one. One quarterback, two running back, two wide receiver, one flex. Or sorry, one tight end and one flex. Whereas here on drafters, it's three wide receiver. So that 
is a huge difference because filling three wide receiver spots every week uh, to maximize your point output, mm, that's a lot more challenging, I feel like. So we definitely hit those wide receivers very early. And now we're just going to take the value that falls to us on the board. Whether it's a running back I like, a quarterback I like, a tight end I like. I feel very open now to we can really just do whatever we want. It's kind of one of the benefits to whether you decide it's running backs or wide receivers. And in a format like this, it's better to go wide receiver. But getting all of the wide receivers out of the way early, you know, I... I don't feel like uh, I'm going to have to have 10 wide receivers on this team because I'm taking just complete shots in the dark on guys later. And I will say also, having done a couple of these drafts now, yes, there are a ton of wide receivers that go early. But there is also a running back dead zone slash bunch of useful guys for if you're doing the zero running back thing, uh, even though we took James Cook earlier as kind of like our hero running back, you look at some of the guys going right now. Zamir White, love it. Najee Harris, love it. Like as my RB2 right now, still on the board, James Conner, Raheem the Dream Mostert, Tony Pollard. So there's lots of quality running backs still available to right now. And do, 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 do. I kind of like Brock Bowers there. That's interesting. For sure, I'm going to take Tony Pollard. That's a big draft energy. Again, doing the show a little bit in his honor today. Um, yeah, you know what? But fuck it. Let's take Brock Bowers, baby. Let's get sexy with it. We took a lot of... Um, what I feel like are chalk picks early. Let's get a little risque. Let's get some Brock Bowers on this team. Brock Bowers and Brian Thomas Jr. Maybe two of the more higher upside rookies potentially available, but it could also, you know, not work out. Traditionally rookie tight ends. You look at the quarterback situation, it's either Farva or Minshew mania. So maybe it doesn't work out for us, but again, with the way this team's come together, I don't hate it. And at this point, we've got a full team now. We've got our quarterback, we've got our tight end, we've got two running backs, and we got five wide receivers. So again, very balanced, generally speaking, is how I will do my builds, even if I will go with a heavy wide receiver uh, stack early on. But by the time I get to, and we're in the 10th round now, I want to have kind of my core team put together. Because if you if you punt a position for too long, you are going to end up feeling really weak at that position. And like right now, I feel really strong at every position. I, I think I would say I feel the weakest, honestly, at tight end. And it's like at tight end, I've got Brock Bowers now, who could be a generational pick, or he could just be, you know, an average tight end. I don't really see a world where he just straight busts. And in the ninth round, I mean, I mean, compare again, Brock Bowers over Dallas Goddard. Dallas Goddard is the worst pick you can fucking make in fantasy, I feel like, because I would rather have just looking at some of the tight ends I mean, uh, the pro so it's like to me, the fall off is at David and Joku. But just as an example, like you know, the per that person took in Joku over Dallas Goddard, I took Brock Bowers over Dallas Goddard. That's because Dallas Goddard is cat and he is cat, like he gets drafted more on his name and the team that he's on. I feel like, as opposed to like his actual talent, because the guy has never, never. In his entire career, past 850 yards, he's never had 60 receptions, and he's never even had six touchdowns. Look it up. So if you're telling me, like, this guy's ceiling is uh, 58 receptions, 800 yards, and five touchdowns, like, what are we doing here? 
I'm definitely taking a running back next. I really am hoping Blake Corum makes it to me here. I've been taking a lot of Blake Corum lately. It just feels like I love Kyron Williams. I don't see any way that Kyron last the entire season doing what he did last year, like, you know, taking an extreme priority book of the work and fuck Graham, Graham cracker, you sniping son of a bitch. That's all right. Let's take, um, uh, God damn it. I'm not taking fucking, uh, yeah, we saved it a little bit. I really like Charbonnet's upside this year. And he's not going to make it back to us. Let's go ahead and fuck around and take Tua. I really love Tua uh, in the 11th and 12th round. I think that's just ridiculous value for a quarterback um, in single quarterback leagues and in best ball leagues like this. I love, 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 love to his value right now. I feel like, you know, barring injury, you talk about a guy who is locked and loaded to finish top 10 and who has top five upside. What does he not have? He's got the coach in Mike McDaniel. He has the superstar wide receiver in Tyree Kelly. He has the almost superstar second wide receiver in Jalen Waddle. He has two ridiculous running backs, Raheem Mostert, and Devon A. Shane, and then you add in Jalen Wright, and then you add in Malik Washington, potentially, and uh, is it Malik Washington, or am I mixing up the names? There's also Taj, the other rookie. I'm forgetting his name, too, but hey, anyway, no, it is Malik Washington. But anyways, the point is, they've added pieces to this offense, even Jonu Smith, sneakily in the tight end room. So, I really love Tua this year, and I feel like people are a little bit nervous because there was like that weird report of uh, he was losing weight or something. But again, specifically, and I know it was very silly the way that it was kind of reported upon, um, but the way that he bounced back from the injuries using jujitsu, which I, again, sounds silly, but like, the way that he is taking hits and rolling out of it, I yeah, I I kind of like him a lot. So I'm just throwing some guys in my queue right now that you may be noticing. And these are just players that I like. And I'll just make it easier to find them as we're getting into this later part of the draft. We're already into round 12 here. So just kind of recapping what we've done. Built out the wide receiver room first. That feels like it's on lock. At this point, I can just take kind of whoever I want. Uh, then we, I feel good about the running back room with Cook and Pollard as kind of leading the way. We are definitely going to have to add some pieces there to kind of just take some shots on guys later. But I'm okay going light on the running backs. And then again, massive upside appeal with Brock Bowers. And I feel really, really, really good about the quarterback room with Murray and uh, Tua there. So that feels like uh, I'm done at quarterback. Like unless I might want to take a guy with like my last pick or something, uh, I'm pretty much locked in at quarterback. I don't, I don't need to do any more there. Uh, a lot of rookie hotness going into my queue right now. That's for sure. Bryce Young in this range just, I feel like is, you know, that's disrespectful. I also like Justin Fields as a sneaky, if you're going to take Justin Fields as a third quarterback uh, and just, you know, if he starts, great. And if he doesn't, I mean, he's your third quarterback for a reason. Uh, and it's, you have to do it in a situation like what we have now presented to us where I obviously... You know, and again, Kyler Murray and Tua both have their own injury histories. But theoretically speaking, I've got two quarterbacks that I'm comfortable with. We're back on the board here. Scroll back up. 
And again, I'm just going to take the guys as they fall to me now. Well, you know what? We actually have a s chance at a Steelers stack. I'm going to take the Muth and Roman Wilson here. I could have gone Ray Davis and just locked up the Bills running back room, theoretically speaking, but I just have this feeling that Frank Gore Jr. is going to be involved somehow, and I just I don't like Ray Davis at that price. If, if Ray Davis as a handcuff to me was going later, you know, or uh, if I saw him perceived him as having kind of spike value potentially like a Jalen Wright, like a Bucky Irving, those type of guys, you know, I, I can see a path, but I don't know, I'm not that into Ray Davis. I'm not going to lie. Uh, you see, I just was talking about Bucky Irving. Speak, speak the devil and his name shall appear. And we are already 13 rounds deep. Her cousins, the Sean Watson go off the board and we're already in the guys tight, like Ty Chandler, Darnell Mooney, Xavier. I like Leggett and Thielen going next to each other. That's interesting. Cole Komet. I mean, Komet at this point is like the fourth third or fourth option behind, I mean, you would assume Keenan and DJ more obviously, potentially Roma Dunes also. Mm -hmm. I do like uh, Graham Crackers. He took uh, Jermaine Burton, which was definitely someone we had in the list. And there goes Kamani Vidal. I didn't think he would make it back to me, to be perfectly honest. Also, uh, low key over here, Mike Mady. Shout out to you with that Justin Herbert, Quentin Johnston stack. I have done that a few times myself. Again, just the value, um, and it's it's funny because it's based just purely off disappointment. <laughs> just people are disappointed with last season. They fucking hated it, and because of that, we're we're drafting Justin Herbert and Quentin Johnston in the eleventh and twelfth round. Like, what are we doing here? Um, it's just funny again to see them go in the range of like Gabe Davis and Adonai Mitchell and Marshawn Lloyd and Zeke. <laughs> oh man, fantasy football is a trip. People, the player, like the way people do their player evaluations is so wild and all over the place that, like, you know, you talk to one guy and uh. Kamani Vidal is like the next star and you talk to another guy and he's a scrub and you talk to another guy. And it's, just, it's so wild at this point. I mean, it's fucking June one, it's June 1st. Nobody knows shit. <laughs> That's actually why I really like, um, you know, the, the way that I approach this channel, generally speaking, I'll tell you a little inside knowledge here. This is a hobby for me. This is not my day job, and I don't really intend for it to be. I, I do this pretty much because I love fantasy football, and I love pro wrestling, and up here in Quebec, I don't really have anyone to talk to about it, and so I was like, hey, you know, let me start a channel and we'll talk into the ether, and maybe eventually someone will listen. Uh, but because of that, I would say that in a sense, I've almost become sort of an aggregator of fantasy football uh, in particular. Oh, you fucking graham cracker. You're fucking killing me with the snipage tonight. God damn it. Hunter Henry. I wanted him. Fuck. Okay, well, I'm going to take Javon before you fuck me over. I'm going to take Tyrone Tracy. Huh, how about that? How you like them apples? Fucking. Ugh. But that's okay, actually. Uh, I forgot we took Muth earlier. Uh, Muth and Roman Wilson. So we're okay still. Because we're going to get that. I don't know if I want both of them. I might just take Justin Fields and hope for the upside. But I could also theoretically take Fields and Russell Wilson. Because we could afford it because we have the extra spot in our wide receiver room where I don't feel like I got to take nine or 10 guys. I can afford to get away with, we already got seven. If I take one more wide receiver, I'm pretty comfortable with that. And we'll have our hateful eight wide receivers. 
And I super love, I got three of my favorite rookie wide receivers on this team. Brian Thomas Jr., Roman Wilson, and Javon Baker. And I mean, I got it rounded out by C.D. Lamb, Brandon Ayuk, D.J. Moore, Chris Godwin. So that feels solid as a rock. And then Bowers and the Muth getting plenty of loose. Kyler and Tua. I like. I love the quarterback room. I'm really enamored with Kyler and Tua, and knowing that we're gonna grab probably a sneaky field stack later. And then the the only place I would say we're a little light. The running back room, definitely after James Cook and Tony Pollard. Pure upside with Zach Charbonnet. Pure upside hope and a prayer with Tyrone Tracy, who is one of my most drafted players in best ball. Um, Tyrone Tracy, uh, if you're not familiar, it's because he was a wide receiver at one point in his college career, which I think normally when you look at college players that kind of played until they were 23 24 usually it's because they weren't good enough to make the leap to the nfl when they were younger and with a guy like a tyrone tracy when when you have kind of not that it's an excuse but the reasoning that he was transitioning from one position to another i i gotta say i don't mind giving him the benefit of the doubt that he can carve out a role especially on this New York Giants team that basically he's competing with Devin Singletary and nobody else. And I think he could be the pass catching running back for that team. And there's another guy that I'll give you guys as a sleeper, a deep, deep sleeper. And it's for this type of draft where you're going 20 rounds deep. I'll tell you in round 20 at 240, the very last pick of the draft, one of the guys I will have my eye on is Dylan Laube of the uh, Las Vegas Raiders. And that's because Laube very much has a passing skill set that differentiates him from the other running backs in that room. So when I look at Zamir White and I look at Alexander Madison, those are two more traditional running backs that you would not accuse of being pass catching specialists. And so that's where Laube who has that skill set slots in and could have standalone value, but then also potentially, you know, if he's actually like really good, could also eventually become the starter because it's not like Zamir White has some kind of crazy contract or draft capital that makes him entrenched as the starter, especially, you know, on a team that's essentially starting over and in the second year with, what was an interim and now is the permanent head coach. All right. Let's see what we've got here. All right. Let's take the fields sneaky link so it doesn't get away from us. And let's take our last. I was going to say let's take our last wide receiver, but I think we can wait. For the next wide receiver, let's take, 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 take. not big on a steamy. Eh? Okay, no, I'm gonna take Tyler Boyd here because I'm running out of time. Um, so we're done. We are done now at wide receiver. That was our last wide receiver pick, and we're done at quarterback. I, I don't want to. I don't think I need the Russell Wilson link. I mean, we have three picks left, though. Eh. We'll put him in the list. How about that? There's my guy, Dylan Laube. Hmm. Let's focus on the running backs now. Roshan has a pa. Uh, oh, he just got took it. Uh, Evan Hall has gross potential value. Will Shipley. Laube is already in our list. Jawar Jordan, sneaky, sneaky. I mean, obviously he's behind Joe Mixon and Damian Pierce. We'll see how enamored they are with Damian Pierce. Miles Sanders is a hilarious pick. I <clears throat> I don't hate taking Miles Sanders with your last pick. Again, in a format like this where you're going 20 rounds deep in best ball, 
It's not because I think Miles Sanders is going to be good on the Carolina Panthers. My hope is more that Jonathan Brooks is good, and because they have Chuba Hubbard, they end up cutting Miles Sanders. That would be my hope, is for him to get cut, land on a better team, and suddenly reemerge and have uh, relevance and value. So that's, again, that's the narrative that I'm telling myself. That's the path that I see for Miles Sanders to have fantasy relevance once again. Uh, but at this point, we are getting into the weeds with these guys. So I'm just going to scroll my way back up because I know my Dylan Laube pick is going to be there for me. Maybe I want to look at one more tight end. Oh, I like I, I don't understand why Jatavian Sanders is not being drafted more. Especially, again, in this format where it goes so deep. You know, Mike Mady here has Bryce Young already. I would love to see him stack with Jatavian Sanders. And that's just a, a stack that I really enjoy. I mean, you look at round 15. Imagine waiting until round 15 to get your second quarterback. And that's pretty much what he did. He waited until 11 and 15, and he ends up with Justin Herbert and Bryce Young. Like, that's not a bad quarterback room. Oh, and there, he did do the Sanders stack. I love him. Shout out to Mike Mady, whoever you are. I like your team. I like your team a lot. He also got Aaron Jones. He got Trey Benson for upside. He got Jalen Wright for upside. In the running back room, he's got Pearsall, DJ Chuck, doot, 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 doot. Quentin Johnston, again, creating Los Angeles Chargers stacks. He's got cold ass McConkey. Yeah, I like that. I like that build a lot. I think that might be one of my favorites. I do like. T212 here got the Josh Allen Kincaid stack fell to them. That's lovely. Lovely. Hmm. Mm -hmm -hmm. A lot of good competition from what I'm seeing here. I also like uh, Woozy Adam. Went very heavy wide receiver and then ended up with Jordan Love. I think... And even like the sneaky uh, Derek Carr stack. I see that. I see that. Just in case Aaron Rodgers gets hurt. I got to say, the the best ball crowd, um, even like your more average drafters, I feel like ha are becoming a lot more astute as it's becoming a more popularized method of playing. Last year was my first year doing any kind of best ball. Uh, and, you know, I was competing, uh, even though I wasn't, like, putting a lot of money into it or anything. I still felt like I was doing okay. All right, let's, uh, you know, we're going to double running back here. We're going to actually Shipley and Laube. Just, again, looking for guys that Shipley, it's purely, that's purely uh, an injury to Saquon. Gives him a path, I think, uh, to playing time. And Dylan Laube, like I explained earlier, I actually see a potential for him to have like uh, an established role outside of just having to, you know, take over because of an injury. He could theoretically become like up again, like a pass catching guy. The only pivot I could have made there is Russell Wilson, who went two picks later, but I've never been a fan, really, of, like, the four-quarterback bill. To me, it's like I've got my guys in Kyler and Tua, and then Fields is a pure upside throw-in of if he gets that job and with the rushing ability, it just gives me potential spike weeks and extra points. But for the most part, I'm relying on Kyler and Tua. So I don't – when you have Fields and Russell Wilson, it's like one of the things that you really want to avoid, honestly, uh, in best ball, even though you, you're – it's almost inevitable in a format like this with 20 rounds, but you want to avoid dead spots on the roster, which is guys that are just going to get zero points all year or at any point in time, really, that are going to have really long stretches of getting zero points. I mean, you're talking about drafting two quarterbacks on the same team. You are guaranteeing that one of them is going to get zero points 
while the other one is starting. Unless one gets injured halfway through a game and then you split it. Having two quarterbacks, not the greatest thing. Like with the running backs, there's it's just so often, unfortunately, that running backs get injured or that they just share a workload or yada yada. It's more understandable to take those late shots on handcuffs with high upside. Again, like a Shipley, like a Tracy, like a Laube. Uh, even, you know, if you want to call Charbonnet a, a uh, handcuff with massive upside, but he goes, he's much more expensive. And I think that's because people see a path for Charbonnet to actually be the starter over even Ken Walker. Hmm. And so we're getting upon our last pick here. I'm very much wondering who I'm going to take. Wow. <laughs> That's something I had not considered, actually. What if? What if? Because what if Bowers isn't the thing because Michael Mayer takes the step? And Bowers, or what if they use like a uh, really heavy two tight end sets a lot? And what if Michael Mayer ends up having more value than we actually think? That would be kind of funny, actually. I don't know if I'm going to actually make that pick, but it's basically saying I have the Las Vegas tight end, whether it's Bowers or Mayer. And I know nobody else is going to take him. It's either that or I take another running back that I think maybe has a path because I went so light on the running backs early and I really only see two starters on my team. It's like just keep taking shots on guys who maybe get a couple random starts during the year. Oh, like a like Rasheen Ali, for example. Uh, that's again hedging against Derrick Henry. Uh, Jawar Jordan hedging against uh, Joe Mixon and potentially even Damian Pierce. Deuce Vaughn hedging against Zeke and Rico Dowdle. Actually, that one's interesting. He's kind of sneaky, actually. Mm. <laughs> he it's because he's so small but like yeah what if he's being overlooked as like the you know he's the reason that they really didn't go and get a running back is because they actually foresee having a one-two punch of whether it's Dowdle or Zeke as kind of the plotter and then having Deuce Vaughn as you know their version of a Devon A. Shane not saying that he's that fast or the same talentization. Do not do not get me wrong. They are not comparable in terms of like their athletic skill set and that type of thing. Um man, interesting. These are the last three guys in our queue. And it is looking grody. Minshew goes one pick before, eh? Um, the, the mayor thing is just really, really calling to me. John fucking Michael. We're going to go with Deuce Vaughn. We're going to go with the Oompa Loompa at the end there. <laughs> Apologies to Deuce Vaughn. I'm sorry. It's not your fault that you're fucking five foot three. Um, all right, let's just recap this really quick. We ended up with like a lot of running backs, but again, very much just taking pure dart throws uh, at the back uh, of the draft for the most part. So just recapping our quarterback room. I'm very loving what I did with the quarterback room. Kyler and Tua, perfect combination. You get NFC, AFC, two guys I think have tremendous upside that can finish in the top 10, maybe even the top five. And then Justin Fields, who just has pure rushing upside if he's able to take that starter job uh, for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And then running back room, James Cook and Tony Pollard. That's like our one-two punch. And then again, just pure up. Of if any of these guys land a starting job or, you know, a, a concrete role on their teams, like that's great. That, we only really need like one, I think, to hit, maybe two. Uh, but Zach Charbonnet, Tyrone Tracy, Will Shipley, Dylan Laube, and Deuce Vaughn. Those are five names to remember. Specifically the last four, Tracy, Shipley, Laube, Vaughn. 
Uh, you're going to want to remember those guys as deep sleepers, whether you're in a deep dynasty league or a deep best ball draft like this. Our wide receiver room is really the strength and core of our team here. We got C.D. Lamb, Brandon Ayuk, D.J. Moore, Chris Godwin, and then rookie upside with Brian Thomas, Roman Wilson, and Javon Baker. And then we locked it down with another veteran in uh, Tyler Boyd. And then finally, our tight end room. We go uh, with just two guys, ultimately Brock Bowers and Pat Fryermuth. So a little bit on the light side. Could have gone Mayer there to really lock it in for the Vegas tight end. Uh, but I like Bowers' potential and upside, and I think the Muth uh, is like a solid tight end too, so I didn't really feel the need to reach on a third tight end. And that is our draft. So, again, this is for drafters. I, I don't think I actually said the name of the contest at the top of this. The $15 entry, but this is for the million three NFL best ball championship. So again, huge shout out to drafters fantasy, uh, huge shout out to again, big draft energy. Uh, make sure you guys go follow him on Twitter and check out his YouTube. Uh, really great watching his YouTube by the way, cause I was able to win a free ticket. Um, so he does giveaways pretty routinely. So again, make sure you guys are going and check out uh, what he's got going on. And you're like, Jack, why are you sending us to the competition? Because for me, it's not competition, you guys. Like I said, this is a hobby for me. I love this very much. But, you know, everyone's got room to eat at my table. I'll tell you guys uh, who I think are uh, the best of the best of the best in the fantasy industry um, so that you guys can get the, the best information that you need. Because I'm definitely not the stats bro. I'm not a daily streamer guy. You know, this for me is, uh, again, this is a fun hobby. I love the comedy shit, and I love you guys out there. Uh, but, you know, guys like uh, Disco and, you know, shout out to my guy Chris Parrish. I'll be on his podcast uh, to, tomorrow. It's happening tomorrow from the time that this is being recorded, but it will have occurred yesterday from the time that this is airing. Anyways. Bottom line is there's a lot of guys out there that I know are grinding and trying to make a living out of this and they do fucking great work and they deserve the follows and big draft energy is one of them. So I'm going to shout him out and, um, you know, I'll shout out, uh, like I said, big draft energy, make sure you follow him, follow Chris Parrish too. I, Cause I just mentioned him as well. Uh, so the Chris Parrish podcast on YouTube, big draft energy again on YouTube and if you sign up to drafters for the first time, make sure you use his code DISCO. It'll match your first deposit, and it helps him out. So that's the big thing. You want to help out content creators. Uh, but, yeah, I appreciate you guys joining the show today. I hope you uh, enjoyed the draft and got some good information out of that. But until the next time, I will catch all of you guys on the flip side. He's running down the middle by the 50. He's at the 30. He's bare-chested and banging his chest. Now he runs the opposite way. He runs at the 50. He runs at the 40. The guy is drunk, but there he goes. The 20. They're chasing him. They're not going to get him. Waving his arms, bare-chested. Somebody stop Look that out, man. Here comes